Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Where is the Love? I am your host. I am Stephanie Hawkenhall. Joining me is my son, Gene Williams, my co host. Good eye, Mike. Good <laughs> morning, to you. Hi, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to Where is the Love? We are here to share with you about bullying versus love. We have been talking about uh, parental alienation. So that's what we talked about last week. That was part one. There's so much more. We have part two for you. So join us in this. If you are here, join us uh, on Facebook, share your Facebook pages. We are on YouTube Live as well as Facebook Live. Love Misunderstood Institute is our places on YouTube and Facebook. We are also on Roku and Amazon Fire. Um, and you can live right now. We're on TV. So catch us on TV. <laughs> and uh, search Pod TV, P O D TV space L I V E. And you can watch us live on TV right now. Um, Son, um, sorry, you want to go ahead and start. Um, I need to do something real quick. Okay, I'm sharing. I'm sharing uh, the post. Give me a quick second. Okay, and I need to share it too. So, so um, I am so not ready. I am so sorry. <laughs> So um, you can also catch us on podtv.tv and that is live on our website or on, on the Pod TV website. So you can catch us there right now uh, live as well. All right. So parental, again, parental alienation is what we're talking about. Um, thank you, Gene, for sharing your post. Uh, I need to share mine. Got you. Well, I can start while while you uh, share. Okay, thank you. All right, all right. So first on the on the board is healing from alienate uh, parental alienation. Parental alienation is deeply painful, but ostracized parents should know that they are not alone. Uh, although it can be frustrating, they should aim to express only compassion and kindness for the estranged child, remaining calm rather than responding to the injustice with anger or rage. They should turn to friends, family, and support groups or, or mental health professionals as they cope with the strain. When a child begins to spend time with the alienated parent, it can often allow the relationship to be repaired. Individual therapy for the alienating parent, the target parent, and the child can help uh, throughout this process as well. So how does parental alienation affect children? So children may, may struggle with self-esteem issues, guilt, and self-hatred as they can internalize hatred towards the targeted parent and are led to believe incorrectly that the parent did not love or want them. Depression and substance abuse are also pathways by which Parental alienation can impact children. Can you repair the relationship with your child after parental alienation? So, never mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The best course of <laughs> Give me a second, y'all. Give me a second. Okay. The best course of action is to limit the child's time with the alienating parent and increase time with the targeted parent. The child's biased view of the parent will gradually clear and even severely damaged relationships can be repaired, research shows. The targeted parent can help by not denigrating the alienating parent or dismissing the child's feelings during this time. So just know, I want to uh, iterate, or I want to uh, 
let you know that. Um, so in talking about this healing, uh, of course, anybody can heal if they choose to be healed. If they choose to acknowledge the things that are going on in their life and if they choose to um, see what the truth is in the matter. So as long as you hold on to a lie and believe the lie, then the truth can't come in. You can't you can't get the truth because you've chosen the lie. So kids can heal. So can parents. Everybody can heal in the situation, but you got to want to heal. So you have a choice. And this is something that I uh, say in my coaching. You know, you can hold on to what you um, have heard and what you believe. Or you can choose to walk by faith, not knowing what you can walk into, but knowing that you don't want this that you have in your hand. So you open your hand, let it go, and you can start your healing process because you have made a choice to heal from, you know, the lie. You made a choice to hear the truth about the matter. So. Uh, I just wanted to add that. Yeah. All right, so you, you, you can go ahead. I need to. Uh, I'm a uh, get out for just a minute. Go ahead with the next part. All right. All right. So the next part is how can children heal from parental alienation? Spending more time with the alienated parent can help repair the relationship. One valuable exercise is to open a dialogue about similarities and differences between family members, discussing neutral topics such as favorite food or color, and later moving on to feelings can help the, the child individuate her parents' her parents' experience from her own. What do therapists need to know about parental alienation? Therapists can, therapists can learn the characteristics of an alienated child such as constantly denigrating, uh, which means to criticize unfairly, uh, disparage uh, the target parent and, and imitate the alienating parents' stories and the degree to which alienation has occurred. Anyway, um, treatment can involve, involve transferring the child to the target parent's home, prohibiting contact with the alienator and taking legal action. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> Where are we at? <laughs> all right, so we're at the aftermath of parental alienation. <sighs> okay, so what are some of y'all's thoughts right now? that are watching, that are tuning in to this information. You know, we never know what life is going to bring us, what we're going to experience in life. So a lot of times in life, we experience things that we never thought we'd experience. Never experienced, never, never thought. So what do we do when we get in situations like that? Again, just like I demonstrated earlier, and I apologize, I'm on and off uh, I, of the screen. <laughs> but we have to make a decision how we're going to receive things that are going on with us. How are we going to deal with those things? So in dealing with those things, we have to, like I said, you know, make a choice. Is this what I want? If this ain't what I want, then we got to choose something different. And we don't always know what that other answer is. We just know we don't want what we're currently getting. So we have to make a choice. Keep this or let it go. <laughs> Mark, you so silly. <laughs> Gene so, thought he was going to be Prince Charming and his forever relationship and then learned he actually had the toad. I told my high school best friend that, you know, she didn't have a boyfriend in high school. 
and we were talking about boyfriends for some reason. And I told her, uh, you know, she was saying she wanted to have the right man, you know, and I said, oh, you're going to have to kiss a lot of toes before you get yeah. that handsome prince. And she still remembered that like 20 years after we graduated from high school, she told me I cursed her. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fact, though. Yeah. <laughs> going, going back to, um, so it said, we, it said earlier, though, that uh, counseling is going to be a, a major help for the, the parent that's been alienated. Um, I do want to say very, very concretely that the situation for a parent who's going through it um, it's, it's gonna it's gonna make you feel broken in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. It's gonna take a lot of help. You need to uh, need to have a strong support system and, and go through constant counseling and journaling and things of that nature because it's gonna make you question everything. You know, um, and we we discussed uh, narcissistic personality disorder in the past. Um, a person who consciously alienates a parent from their child is, I would think by definition, a person with narcissistic personality disorder, uh, definitely borderline personality disorder. I mean, because it takes a conscious effort to do that and, and a lack of empathy yep. and, uh, and emotional intelligence. Um, so, man, it, it's, it's rough. Like you said, dealing with a lot of toads. You gotta, gotta kiss a lot of toads before you get you know, and I mean, it, it's funny how Mark said it, but you know, you get in a situation, you think it's, it's, you know, this and, this and, this and, and then you realize down the line that, you know, um, the person's intentions weren't, weren't what they initially uh, suggested that they were. Right. And, um, and it shows, especially the person with, you know, those personality disorders, it shows up and like times of their anger, they start saying stuff to you know to cut you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So always throwing darts at your head because they're upset, right? And, and don't know how to maturely uh, process emotion. So instead of you know uh, becoming more introspective, they they get reactive and, and snappy and, and vicious. <laughs> And venomous with their actions, you know. Yeah. And trying to do and try to find ways to hurt you, just you know, just because they can't process. So the first thing is to do is to cause pain. You know what they say: hurt people, hurt people. Yes. So it, it's a situation like that, and and I think for me, that is one of the only things that helps me maintain some sort of some sense of compassion and empathy for people who do that. Um, because I know, at least I don't feel personally that people are, you know, uh, evil like that. <laughs> it, it's their, it's their, it's their upbringing, you know, and, and things like that. Things they saw often, yeah, um, and, they, and and were um, informed, however, that those actions are okay. So then they just repeat it over time, and it, and it becomes like a. You know, like playing an instrument, you know, over time you get a callus. Yeah. You know, your, your hands know what to do before you do it. It's just they do it naturally now because you trained yourself so long in that particular um, course of action over time. And it's just natural now. You just over here, just you Jimmy Hendrix out on them, <laughs> on the lark stuff, just on some lark, <laughs> on some lark Jimmy Hendrix type stuff. <laughs> man, set fire to the guitar and just narking on a, Oh, you know, with some, some man, listen, oh, Lord, Jesus. But something, something that I thought was really interesting and important um, from the standpoint of the information that we're giving here is that it, they, 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 they're showing that the alienated parent needs to be pulled back from the child's life and the person who's being targeted needs to be pushed forward in the child's life. Uh, that's That's the smartest thing I've heard. Like, you know, the, the alienating parent is the one who's spinning these vicious, venomous things into the child's head, causing this separation, the chasm between the alienated parent and the child. Right. Which is long term going to create a negative, again, you know, 
not only possible substance abuse and things of that sort, uh, lack of confidence, but also like this child is pretty much guaranteed now to have to, I mean, we all gonna kiss toes, period. You gonna kiss toes, yeah. that's, that's guaranteed. Yeah. But, but the way you do it and what you deal with and what you have to encounter um, and what you accept. For instance, if, you, if you're if you in a situation where you're, you've been alienated, you might get into an abusive relationship. You know, right. verbally, physically, emotionally, whatever. Um, because your parent who alienated you from your other parent didn't give you the opportunity to learn how important it is to have a balance in your relationship with people. Right. How to deal with things in a constructive, mature manner. It's natural for people to have disagreements. That's, yep. natural. That's part of any relationship. However, the way you deal with it you know, it is is the big thing. Um, and, and you need to know that as a child growing up. Okay, it's okay that we had this disagreement. As long as we can sit back and talk and unpack things. Yep. And, and come to an agreement and an understanding. Um, but when you have a person who's alienated, who, who's kept you alienated from your other parents, and you don't get that other side, and you end up either being the victim of abuse or being the perpetrator of the abuse because you've seen it so much. You know what I'm saying? So you, you're, you're creating a negative paradigm for that child when you alienate them from their parent because the other parent is going to provide balance for them. Right. Now, if they're abusive, like truly, and not something you're making up to get your point across. Let me get your point across. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, man, it's, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, like true abuse, you know, then they need to be with the family. They need to be with both. And if you are the person who's alienating, then they need to be away from you. Right. Because you are causing, you you are, you are create you are abusing the child. That's abuse. It's yep. abuse to keep them away from their parent. Unless they're abusing them for real. Like not something you made up. Yeah. Oh, well, listen, he did this and he looked at me this way. His countenance scares me. <laughs> you so silly I gotta be man I gotta be if I wasn't silly I'd be insane right now so you know keep being silly cause being insane ain't it um, you know uh, it's, it's very unfortunate that there are people in the world like this that think that it's okay and believe that it's okay to treat people crappy, to insult and humiliate people instead of loving people, treating people the way you want to be treated that right there. and being kind to one another. That is love. So where is the love in all of this mistreatment, this alienation, you know, the other parent and other child? Where is the love? There is none. None. There is absolutely no love in that. And you can't do anything to make it appear okay. It's, it's just absolutely not okay. So, and you will reap what you sow. Everything you do to somebody else, you're going to get it back. It might not be from that same person. Every hole you dig, the deeper you dig it, the farther you have to fall because you are going to fall in that hole right. that you are digging. It's a fact. So, and it may take some time for that to happen. So the thing, as I was talking, the thing about that is what are we doing while we're going through these things? How are we responding to it? How are we acting towards it? Because it's so tough to be going through this experience. So if, if our heart is not in the right place, if we're not focused on treating others the way we want to be treated, then we're suffering. We're holding some things back from ourselves. And so we have to remember <laughs> that it's not, our focus should not be on how that per person is treating us or how those people are treating us. <laughs> 
although it's hard, our focus right. should not be there. Our focus has to be on the right thing. You know, am I doing my best to treat them right? Am I saying things to them that is beneficial, that is helpful, that uh, is wholesome? And it's hard because you want to, honestly, you want to slap some people up. <laughs> for doing mean and hateful and saying mean and hateful things. But that's not how we are supposed to respond to things. So it's hard and you really have to be a person that really desires to do things right. And even when you, just because you desire to do things right doesn't mean that things are going to come out that way. You know, because we're natural we're natural people meaning we walk this earth and we respond to things in a natural way and that is the hard part we can't do that if we do we're gonna stay in this situation longer than we wanted to be because we didn't respond to it the right way and definitely like one of the things you're gonna uh have to realize is a parent is being alienated that you, even though it's tough and unnecessary, you're gonna have to be above reproach. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta be above reproach. You can't talk trash about the parent. You, you. I mean, it's like any any move you make, <laughs> any move you make, they gonna be oh 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 oh. Yeah. And f forget what they did. They don't care about what they did. Right. And also to to touch on what you said, like. No, it's not love, alien, uh, consciously alienating another parent. And not only is it not love for, you know, the person that you're alienating and the child, but it's also a lack of love for yourself. Because you know yeah. how much hate, you know how much energy that it takes to to constantly walk around with a huge ball of hatred within yeah. yourself at all times? That is detrimental to your health, mental, physical, yeah. and emotional, and spiritual. Yeah. And then when you have that constant ball of negative energy inside you, you only attract more. You right. only attract more. The universe or God or however you see it gives you more of what you're constantly feeling and thinking about yourself. So yeah. you might wanna might wanna work on changing that record that you've got over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that sounded like a, a rooster or something. I don't even know. I tried though. I I, I don't beatbox. Sorry, yeah. I don't I don't mix the records, so Sis, come get your nephew. He cutting up. <laughs> um, so where are we? Uh, did you want to ask something uh, else? Uh, I'm done talking for right now. Okay. Uh, you said aftermath. Yeah. Lord. Okay. The aftermath of parental alienation. Coming to recognize parental alienation as an adult can be a long and difficult journey. Many children develop a new realistic understanding of their parents later in life. Didn't we just talk about that? So even, and I'm gonna stop, well, let me finish this and then I'll go back to what I was gonna say. They are often grateful to develop a better relationship with a targeted parent. I'm glad I kept going. <laughs> Let me read that again. They are often grateful to develop a better relationship with the targeted parent, yet they may also struggle with the fallout of a strained or weaker relationship with the alien, alienating parent. Just said that you're going to reap what you sow. The child uh, may eventually, hopefully, desire the truth. And so when they find out the truth, this parent, the targeted parent was not the parent that was abusing me. That was that was the parent that was trying to love me and give me love, unconditional love, and yeah, to help me. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and the 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 alienating parent was the one that was lying, was not telling me the truth about the entire situation. They were lying on me. They were lying on, you know, the targeted parent. Man, like I said, what you do, you're going to reap what you sow. 
Universal law, baby. Universal law. Yeah. So you want to add something yeah. else? All right. So does personality disorders contribute to parental alienation? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get into this. <laughs> Parents with personality disorders routinely, routinely display extreme, extreme behaviors. Oh my, to the people that they are displaying those extreme behaviors to. Stop being flying monkeys. Stop believing everything you hear. Stop going repeating everything that you hear, especially when you know it's a lie. Stop it. Stop it. That's bullying. So many forms of bullying. And I talked about so many forms of bullying on last week's show. Go back to that show. And I didn't mention all of the forms or types of bullying that uh, is experienced in parental alienation at that time. There's more. Oh, yeah. But you can go and get a taste of some of the different types of bullying. So, the yeah. go ahead. So it, it, it mentions about you know this this happens during the voice. Um, I think, and this is just a random thought of mine. I really think that like you go through all this hoopla when you're going through a divorce and a custody battle. I really think that during that process there should be a psychological evaluation done. Ooh. Like, it should be mandatory. Yes. Like, if that was something that was done in every case, yep. different results may occur. Yep. And it wouldn't be a possibility for the parent to alienate a child. Yep. Anyway, that's my two cents. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Danica. Hey, Beth. How y'all doing? <laughs> Thank y'all for joining. Thank you, sir. It was three cents. <laughs> okay. So um, here are some key points about the parent with the personality disorder that is routinely, routinely displaying extreme behaviors. Key point. Parental alienation tends to occur in divorces when one parent displays extreme words and behavior about the other parent. People with personality disorders tend to have a pattern of repeating hostile, hostile, hostile. <laughs> Break in your house. <laughs> uh, man, okay. Let's get it back together. All right. Uh, I'm going to read it again. People with personality disorders tend to have a pattern of repeating hostile and unpredictable behavior in the presence of their children. All right. When parents repeatedly display extreme emotion and behavior, children tend to develop emotional problems. Shame on y'all parents for doing that. You cause emotional problems in your child because of your hostile, negative, bullying behavior. You okay with that? Really, are you okay with that? They don't care. That's the point. They don't care. Especially How can... <laughs> especially if they have a personality disorder. They don't care. It's about them. It's all You're about right. them. You're right. And they don't even care about themselves. That's that's the huge thing. Like It's only because you're angry because you didn't get what you wanted the way you wanted it. So now you're yeah. going to take away, you're going to alienate the other parent. And it's right. not for the child. You can say that. <clears throat> you can lie to yourself. See, I almost choked on that lie before I even had it. 
<laughs> you can say as many times as you want to that it's about concern for your child. You don't care about that child. Right. You and you make excuses as to why you don't bring up bring them around. Yep. And then mm, I'm okay. You know what? <sighs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you make excuses and they never make any sense. Like they're illogical. I can say I can say the H word. You can say the H word. H E L L. <laughs> Look, Beth, can he say the H word? <laughs> well, man, like got the context, I don't even want to use the word. It's just, uh, it's just disturbing and, and, and it's hurtful in so many, <laughs> so many ways, right? As you know how to make it. Um, dang it. She said, Beth said, you can say the H word, J. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the permission. I had to make sure first, you know what I mean? <laughs> he, right. he got the auntie permission. Right. You know, we don't want the R rating on the show yet. <laughs> so, but y'all, this is really ridiculous. I mean, children tend to develop emotional problems, which may include parental alienation. Come on, y'all. I mean... Get yourself fixed. Get your 988. That is the mental health hotline. You need help. Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to others about your mental health because you ain't together. I don't care what you say, what you think. When you're doing things to constantly damage others, and <laughs> it's going across the bottom of the screen. Thank you, Mark. 988, the mental health hotline. Call it. <laughs> hey, excuse me. I need some help. I think I lost my mind on the road somewhere. And I don't know where I can find it. Can you help me? <laughs> so, uh, Y'all, this, this is crazy. We have to laugh to keep from losing our mind. <laughs> I lost my mind. Can't find it. Please help. <laughs> That's what that was people, a perfect commercial right there. Right. <laughs> people need to admit that there's a problem. They need to uh, not lie about what they are experiencing. You are causing other people a lot of damage. Um, and maybe you're okay with losing your mind and developing than having mental health issues. But it's not okay to cause that on other people. It is not okay. Yeah. Get yourself together. Get yourself some help. Start the healing process. Stop damaging others with what you're doing and what you're saying and what you're causing. <sighs> you want to add anything else? Yeah, and also anyone who who is around the, the parent that is alienating the other parent and you know about this and you don't speak up, you're only contributing to abuse. So you are a accomplice to a crime being committed against that child that you're, that, that you are um, co-signing for. Then there we go, enable. You're enabling the, the, person, the parent who is alienating the child by your complicity. Yeah. By not saying something. If you really love the person that's alienating the other parent, and you just speak up. Yeah. You will speak. <laughs> if you care about the person, that that's your child. Yeah. You say, for instance, it's your child. I'm sorry. It's, it's your child. <laughs> it's, your <laughs> child. it's your child is doing <laughs> the alienation. It's doing the alienation. If you don't say anything to your child about that, you don't constantly be a bug in their ear about what they're doing wrong to that child. You got an issue, partner. Yeah. And you are you are an enabler and an accomplice to a, a crime, and it's not victimless. Yeah, it's, it's hurting the person that's that's being alienated for sure, but you're destroying the, the the mental health of the child. And I mean, how how do you, how do you justify? That? Right. You justify that? Like, and then. Mm,
Yeah. You're disgusting. You're disgusting. You're disgusting well, if you, if you do that, if you allow someone to do something because you're embarrassed, you should be more embarrassed that you don't speak up. Because right. that's what it makes you look like. It makes you look like a, what's the name? A spineless jellyfish. And you have no integrity whatsoever. Yep. So why should you be respected? Yep. Makes you look like a manipulated puppet. Yeah. You're right, Mark. You a are right. monkey with strings on him. All right. Parental alienation most commonly occurs in separation and divorce when a child resists or refuses to see one of their parents because of the statements and behaviors of their favored parent, not because of something the rejected parent has done. You know, uh, this don't just pertain to kids that part. I'm going to say something to that. So, um, when you agree with something you know is not true about somebody else you are and i said this earlier you're agreeing with the lie and you become a secondary bully because you know that this person is bullying they're lying they're controlling the other person but yet instead of speaking up you agree so in the case gene was just talking about you know you know somebody's messed up but you won't help them so you are agreeing with that and you become a secondary bully and that ain't cool go ahead and say what you want to say mm. okay so man the child's resistance or refusal seems to primarily come from repeated negative emotions and statements made by favored parent about the rejected parent, also known as bad mouthing or brainwashing. Haven't we been saying that? Can you say that one more time? <laughs> one more time. So the favored parent when the uh, repeated negative emotions and statements made by the favored parent about the rejected parent, also known also known as bad mouthing or brainwashing. It Shame on you. <laughs> Shame on you. Other relatives, friends, and professionals may join in the negative messages about the rejected parent in the presence of the child or directly to the child. Secondary bully. Secondary bully. You scared of the bully? You scared of the bully? You, you can't speak up to the bully? You scared of them? So you joining in to keep them from bullying you? That's one thing a secondary bully does. But you agreeing with the mess instead of speaking up for what's right or what's true. Secondary bully. You a bully too. There are often serious blockages of the rejected parent's time and activities with the child, such as scheduling activities during the rejected parent's time or just not exchanging the child as planned. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You just <laughs> refuse to get things right. What's the problem? Can't you see you got an issue? Whoa, textbook. Can't you see you got issues? There are often efforts to make the rejected parent look bad in the eyes of the child, like blaming the divorce on him or her, also common is saying there isn't enough money to do fun things because the 
other parent <laughs> doesn't pay enough child support. Stop lying. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to stay on um, reading this. But okay. Okay, so the other parent or the other parent receives too much child support. One may simply say repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly that the other is incompetent as a parent. Your day is coming, child. I, I, your day is coming. It's on the way. It's on the way. You want to add something? You want me to keep going? <sighs> Parental alienation is not a gender issue. Did you hear that? It's not a gender issue. It's not just men or women. Both mothers and fathers can be the target. It's not a normal result of divorce. Only a small, small portion of children become alienated and divorced, perhaps 10 to 15%. And it's not a symptom of child abuse by a rejected parent because most abused children don't reject either parent. They just want the abuse to stop. It's not estrangement, which means that the child is estranged from a parent because of their own behavior, abuse, domestic violence. It's not a simple preference for one parent over the other, such, such as preferring the same gender parent. How about this, y'all? So the parent, the alienating parent, feeds the child a bunch of lies, got this child scared to death of you. If I don't do what you say, then I'm gonna get this punishment or that punishment or what punishment am I gonna get? I know I gotta do, go ahead. No, no, no you finish, I just, I, I think so. I, I know I gotta do what you say or there's gonna be consequences. I don't wanna face you. I don't want to have to deal with you on this issue. So I'll say and do what you want me to say. I'm going to stop there so you can say what you want to say. Yeah, even up to the point where like <clears throat> um, they will, some of them, some parents are aggressive and, or, you know, ah, the kids or whatever. Some people play it passive aggressive. Like for instance, all right, so you show happiness around the other parent that I don't like, then I'm a, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm snarky and snappy at you, you know, or, or you come around and you ask me a question. I don't act and I act like I don't want you around, you know, that's alienation in itself. Yeah. You know, cause you did, you talk to our parent for him, like, you know, some people be like, you don't want to hear the parent, the other parent's name around the child. You, that child mentions the other parent's name. You get upset. Yep. <laughs> You get upset because that because they mentioned their parent. That's yep. part of who they are. Yep. Personally, I would never get upset, you know, if, if my one of my children mentioned my ex wife's name because that's their mother. Right. It makes no sense to me to have an issue with them talking about a vital part of who they are. So, just to to make to that's a manipulation. It's a manipulation. So yeah. now they can't even speak their name and definitely can't be showing happiness around you for that other parent. Right. Because then it's like, oh, oh, so, so that's how you do me? <laughs> now, now, now and, and then they switch it and be like, you, I feel betrayed. Mm -hmm. What kind of game is that? They got to pick sides now? They came from both DNA. They part you, part me. Just And if the if the parent is going to tell your friends you got to pick <laughs> between me and that other person, why right. wouldn't they tell the child that? Oh, and you're right, right Danica. You're right, Danica, by saying the threat of love being taken away. So I'm going to buy you gifts. I'm going to love bomb. That's what that's called. Love bomb you so that I can get what I want get you to react and respond the way I want you to, to respond and react. Right. That's a shame for anybody to have to live with that thought or to have to live 
that way. You're going to take away from me and manipulate me to get me to do what you want me to do. Right. Yeah, so I, I want to go a little deep on the definition of love bombing. Okay. So love bombing is anything that you do as a as a person, you, but like she said, buy them a lot of extravagant gifts or now you just want to be around them all the time or whatever. Just, you know, all up in their face. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, you know, <laughs> love, it was a love shack. I thought it was love shack. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, you you shower them with gifts and attention and affection. Mm -hmm. um, and then as soon as they do something you don't like, then they pull it back. So then it's like the child is addicted to that love and attention yep. that they're getting for you. So now they're going to do anything and everything they to can get it. to get it, to get more of it. And then the person who's doing the love bombing pulls back slowly, you know, slowly but surely and gives less love and attention over time. And this other person is running towards them. It's like a, a person running with a carrot in front of their face. Yep. You know, always doing something to get to this person's affection. Exactly. Come on. Really? I'm really in. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Way out there. Way out there. Yep. But but in truth, that's abuse, that's manipulation, that's controlling nature. Because what you're what you're doing is not true love. Right. You love, you, you feeding this person uh you you're overgoing with the love. I, I can't think of the term. You overflow them with love, knowing that it's not for the sake of love itself but to manipulate and control their mindset and their actions with your, with your, uh, with the things that you've done. So yeah. That, that's love bombing. Yeah. yeah. It's so sad. Uh, the things that people do for attention and to get things to happen their way, but that kind of stuff don't last forever. Um, I lost where we were. Okay. All right. Whether parental alienation is an intense dislike or hatred by the child for the other parent and a desire to eliminate him or her from their lives. I want you to give up your parental rights. So what is the cause of such an in intense and destructive attitude and behavior by a child towards the other parents? controlling and manipulating and we're going to go into now uh so probably. let me add right quick danica said false love oh yeah yeah go ahead to add to what you just said well, i was just going to go on to the next thing okay all right so right here we're going to discuss the correlation between personality disorders and parental alienation Personality, personality disorders have a lot of characteristics that may explain the behavior involved with parental, parental alienation. If you want to add a letter to that word. Um, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, currently known as the DSM-5-GR, describes personality disorders as essentially an enduring pattern of dysfunctional interpersonal behavior that is long lasting and unchanging. This is characterized by dysfunctional thought processes, unmanaged emotions out of proportion to events, what making a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> yep. And impulsive behavior. Much of this behavior impacts their children as well as their adult partners. Law always gotta walk on eggshells. You never know when they're going to explode. Right. Um, a, gr a growing body of empirical research has also considered associations between personality disorders and the quality of functioning in specific interpersonal relationships, such as ones with their children, parents, siblings, peers, and romantic partners. So, cluster B personality disorders. The DSM-5-TR lists 10 personality disorders, which are assigned to three categories, cluster A, cluster B, and cluster C. Cluster B stands out as being particularly problematic in raising children. Cluster B personality disorders include narcissistic personality disorder, 
So narcissistic, borderline, histrionic, and anti-social personalities. <clears throat> the DSM-5-TR notes that they are dramatic, emotional, and erratic. They are. In addition, a meta-analytic study of personality disorders found that cluster B personality disorders tend to be associated with top, uh, <clears throat> domineeringness, vindictiveness, and intrusiveness. Furthermore, all personality disorders are identified as having an inability to care for the needs of others. Other research I did. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Right. Other research identifies parents who simply have traits or subclinical level of cluster B personality disorders as still being a major mental health risk to their children, even as young as four or five years old. Uh, for the first time, subclinical levels of borderline, antisocial, and narcissistic personality disorder symptoms in parents have been documented to predict behavioral and emotional difficulties in their children as early as the preschool age. When the parents were not cohabitating, the variance of the children's emotional problems explained by parental sy systems increased more than six times. So what this is saying is that when you're around the parent who is the chaos, the child is going to show uh, personality disorders, emotional disorders, you know, um, tendency to be violent or withdrawn, one or the other. One of the children or the other. <clears throat> when they're with the parent that is calm and provides that balance for them, then things get better for them six times each way. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Danica said, wow. And so I want to add to this. Imagine the anxiety. The anxiety that's increased in this child. And that is, there's absolutely no balance. If the child is only with that parent that's causing the drama, the chaos, the anxiety. There has to be balance with a calm parent. This is just crazy. You just driving your own child crazy and you okay with that because you crazy. That's all they know. And, I, and, and I'm not necessarily even trying to be uh, empathetic about the situation, but that's all they know. They, all they know is that chaos. Because yeah. again, like, like, like we said earlier, it's like playing that guitar and you build that the muscle memory and the calluses over time. So eventually, you know, those things that you used to practice, now they just become second nature. So you're playing that chaos chord over and over again. Parental alienation chords, yes, Jimi Hendrix, over and over again, because that's all you know. That's all you know. I mean, they learned it from somebody. You think what I'm saying? Right. There's examples. Now, narcissistic personality disorder comes from trauma from the past. Yeah. And seeing other people with this similar personality disorder and you learn those things and you make them part of your your uh, characteristic makeup right so then eventually you begin to display the same things i mean that's what you just read as yeah. early as preschool yeah as early as preschool kids start to display their parents personality disorders at preschool beverly said driving a child crazy so sad that's exactly what's happening is you driving a child crazy and i mean Wait, oh, <laughs> I can't even imagine being okay with being crazy. I mean, mentally, but I mean, unless you seek help, you don't know no different. You, all you know is what you're around. You know, you're a product of your environment. <sighs> But one thing to, to, to think about, though, is if you don't like it, if it don't feel good to you, then it's probably something that you need to go get checked out, get, get some help with. 
confessing that something is wrong yeah. is the first step. That's a recovery. I'm crazy. Yeah. Something wrong with me. Something I need wrong. help. Not Admit it. <laughs> Admit it and get help. Don't drive everybody else crazy just because you crazy. Yeah. It don't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what kind of disorder you have. If somebody's brought it to your attention, then that means you need to consider it. Is this true or not? Nah? <laughs> crazy Wait. loves crazy. It yeah. wants to drive you insane with them. Yeah, I don't want it. <laughs> I'm good. But no, like, um, thank you. Yeah, you have you have to be you have to be able to be honest with yourself, like, and be blunt and razor sharp with your honesty. You know, what I mean, um, you know that your mind is not right. I mean, the the person who knows you best is yourself. If you think you're crazy, then. <laughs> so, and also, I want to go back and say this. I feel like this. I feel like we're all crazy. We're all crazy, and some of us are just better at functioning as we're crazy. Like we find ways to channel the crazy into something positive. Yeah. However, if you can't do that, then you may need to get some assistance. That we all need therapy. I said it all the time. I absolutely, absolutely believe in that. We all need therapy. We yeah. all got trauma to unlearn, to unpack and to do something positive with it. Right. Even if it just take inventory for the stuff that we've been through and, and find it away in a way that is productive as a way as opposed to being destructive, then we need that. Um, yeah. But just knowing that you're crazy and not doing something about it. Yeah. Like that, that's a problem. That's, that's psycho is what that is. I mean, I'm just I, saying. I'm inclined to agree, unfortunately. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, I'm inclined to agree, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so we're almost out of time. So we're going to go down to a common, a common characteristic of persons with PDs, personality disorders, is that they themselves most often do not consider their behavior to be problematic. The traits are egocentric yet their way of dealing with other people may represent a major stressor to persons who are close to them. Subsequently, parents with symptoms that are characteristic <laughs> of bipolar disorder, ASPD, I don't know what that is, but it's some kind of personality Antisocial. disorder. Antisocial personality disorder. Okay, and then NPD. Um, Narcissistic personality disorder. So these people, people with uh, these characteristics may readily see the faults and flaws in their children and spouses, but rarely acknowledge that their own behavior or attitude contributes to any problems. I'm gonna let you read the conclusion. Are you yeah. to read it? take a look at yourself? <laughs> I'm talking about the man in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all come get him. <laughs> All right, guys. And in conclusion, <laughs> um, together, it would appear that the interpersonal behavior of parents with personality disorders and uh, or even just traits would significantly impact their children. Their negativity towards the other parent constantly emphasizing their faults and flaws <clears throat> may be a significant factor in alienating their children against the other parent so that the child attempts to calm the hostile and unpredictable <laughs> Lord, unpredictable parent that they are with by agreeing with them more and more over time. Well, I, didn't even read, I couldn't even read what that said. That was about so fast. Um, more research into, yeah, so, and then, so, and I, and I, this, a person who had, who is, uh, the alienating parent often uses their child as an emotional snot rag. <laughs> that can't be last night I had to say it on the show. I was like, they, they that's a shame. Like I mean, they do. Yeah. 
and then this card. All right. <laughs> 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 Beverly, keep praying for Jane. <laughs> you got to pray harder. Pray harder. <laughs> <laughs> she said, Beverly said, sing, sing, Jane, sing, man in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, we are out of time, but we were able to finish this subject. This is deep just like the narcissist when we were on a narcissist oh my gosh so many crazy things so many crazy people when you don't admit that things are wrong with you when you don't get help mark said there's no getting him tried to find the white jumpsuits for him but they are on strike yeah. at the moment <laughs> yeah. i couldn't find one big enough to make me hold myself for long self love i love me Oh, thanks, sis. Beverly yeah, stayed yeah. very good show. Um, y'all, as I said, we are out of time. You wanna you have any last words, son? You wanna say? Yeah, just be just be a blessing to yourself and others out there, man. Yeah. Think about, think about your actions and how not only will they affect uh how they affect others, but how they affect you long term. Think about the long term effects of your actions. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And remember, treat people the way you want to be treated, not the way they treat you, um, because that's what's going to change the trajectory of what's happening in your life. It's hard. It takes practice. You have to really focus uh, on um, doing the right thing, regardless of what's happening around you. So stay focused. Um, thanks for joining. <laughs> thanks for joining us. Thanks for being a part of the show. Thanks for your comments, uh, your input. Thanks for listening to us. We send you away with peace. We send you away with love, joy, and happiness. We send you away. Take care. Stay positive. Keep your mind right. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.